quite frank, we're in an uncertain time. And a lot of things I'm not even sure of because I've never thought that we would be in a position like this in my life to where we're quarantined and have to stay in. And I think this is going to change the way we do business, whether it's government, nonprofit, private, corporate, we're going to do business different then. And so there's a couple, there's a couple things I think that we need to focus on. One is education. Um, the, the, the lady that talked about the education in the Pittsburgh Public Schools not being able to get it. I think we have a capable board, but this is an opportunity for us to work together in regards to finding out from the state level how we can help because our children should never be in this position again. We know that there'll be other viruses that come down uh, that's stronger than this virus right here. We know that. I mean, it's, it's been coming every couple of years. So the catch becomes now, what do we have to do at a state level to ensure that we have an opportunity to make sure that kids still receive quality education at this in time, in, in, these, in these uncertain times. So that's number one, I think we have to work close. Two is I think for small businesses, there's gonna be a lot of small businesses that just don't make it. Depending on how long this lasts, there's gonna be more that don't make it. And we have to make sure that, you know, there's continuing legislation, continuous legislation coming out that talks about how we girt our small business. But just as important as a more important for districts in my, for businesses in my district is, disadvantaged businesses that's doing business in disadvantaged neighborhood and predominantly black African-American neighborhoods who we know were just on that rope. They're just right there. I mean, they're making it, but they're really not making it. And longer that this, and the longer that we have to stay, stay at home, the longer that this virus is out here, it's going to have a devastating impact to a lot of the small businesses that hire people right out of the community. And so we have to have a plan for that. And I think thirdly is that we also have to talk about our safety nets. If one thing that this has taught us is that at the end of the day, we need to increase and make sure our safety nets are okay. Our senior citizens, a lot of them, they're not getting on this type of information. A lot of them are by themselves. A lot of them are just make, a lot of them are just falling through the crack because they make a little bit over the guideline. I think that we have to go, I think that what we have to do is that we're going to have to evaluate how we do all this all over again. The way we did business before this is over. Everything we do now is going to be new. The way we do business is new. And I think that gives us a great opportunity for cooperation and unity. I also believe that we got an opportunity right now to show leadership in Allegheny County and the city of Pittsburgh and the state. I'm so happy to what Dr. Levine and Governor Wolf has done. Almost every day they've been on TV giving updates about everything that's going on. When we call up there to get information for the community, the response time has been less than 48 hours. I, I can't ask for nothing better than that in times of uncertainty. So I think going forward, it's just how do we strengthen an emergency line? What is an emergency, emergency plan? Are we making sure that we have emergency plans in some of our most disadvantaged communities that we know the information is not getting there? We got a great opportunity for unity and cooperation. We discuss it. All of us talk about it all the time. The, day, the time is now that we really show how we come together as one, a city, county, and state to ensure that our most disadvantaged businesses are going to be taken care of, small businesses are going to be taken care of, how we restructure education so that we're given quality education, as well as how we deal with some of our, so, our, some of our safety nets to make sure that our seniors and most vulnerable citizens are okay. Thank you. Uh, again, in the same way, put, put your hand up with the, uh, with the raise hand thing. I'll, I'll do it myself. You can see what it looks like in the participants list. Uh, and anyone who has a question, uh, we'll, we'll get you on as soon as we can. Either hear or see us, depending on what you put on your camera. I might say something that I don't want to. Doesn't look like there are any questions at this time, Mac, for Representative Ganey. Could yeah, you, so uh, perhaps, when we're done, add um, after the representative wraps up, perhaps just um, add a note about timekeeping? Right. So we're going to be uh, uh, from here on out. We'll you'll be hearing a chime when there's 30 seconds remaining, and then a beep when the time is up, and that'll help us stay on time. Uh, what may also help us stay on time is we may be missing a candidate here. Uh, so here's what we did. To, we've had uh, uh, Representative Franklin, Representative Ganey have- uh, Can I, I just before I, 
Sure. Before we go off, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Appreciate it. Stay safe out there. Practice the social distancing. Um, and I just really wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.